much. Well, we are thrilled to have Anna Marie Montañez, principal of the Learning Center, and we have her email address here on the slide. And I'm going to stop sharing and allow you to share, Anna Marie. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Uh -huh. And um, let, me, let me just, there it is, the stop share. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. Let me see, here we go. Okay, so um, thank you again. Thank you, Lori, for inviting me to be a part of this um, meeting. Um, when we were going through my plan, I was sharing with her some of the work that we're doing here at Harupa Adult School. And like I said, this is just, you know, what we're doing, it's working for us. Um, it was working pre-pandemic. During the pandemic, a lot, well, most of our CTE courses stopped entirely, uh, which welding and security guard were two of them. But now coming out of the pandemic, we're transitioning back into all of our full-on in-person uh, classes. So um, just how we decided which classes we were going to focus on, we looked at our CTE programs that we already have in place. So currently we have medical assistant, we have pharmacy tech, we have a uh, computer operator class, we had welding, and um, we have security guard. So we looked at and we saw what were the courses that were not as long and courses where it wasn't as heavily theory involved. So like you're looking at pharmacy tech, you know, they need to learn all the drugs. We were looking at MA, they have to learn all the body systems. And what we did was we decided on focusing on welding and on our security guard test bo class. Both of those are shorter. Um, our welding class is 16 weeks and our security guard class is only five weeks. Um, what we decided to do was we added additional support from an EL instructor. So we, we used a co-teaching model where we have the class. In the class, we have the actual teacher teaching the CTE and we also have the EL teacher in the class with them. Um, in order to even get this started, I'm gonna go through each one, you know, so I'm just kind of giving an overview. Um, before we even um, got it started, we had to add in additional class time for language support. So when I discuss the, the different programs, you'll see how that fits in. And then, you know, we're very blessed here in Harupa. Um, we have work experience support through our district and community partners. And just our district has been really, really supportive of, of our programs and, um, and us implementing them. So I'll start with our welding class. So again, like I said, we, we were very fortunate. The district had prior to me coming to Harupa had paid for and designed a full welding shop. So the welding shop has 16 bays, all state of the art. Um, they did it at one of the high schools and they had three kids that used the shop. So when I came on, they asked if, you know, I was willing to take it over and see if the adults would take advantage of it. At that point, I said, absolutely. And, you know, we started our regular welding program. So we did a, we do a 16 week weld week program. Um, for our ILCE, we do the eight hours of our CTE hands-on course. So they typically right now, it's a Tuesday, Thursday class from six to 10. Then we have the EL support teacher in the class as well. So the teachers, you know, they have their time before class starts. They develop their um, their learning objectives. You know, it's all, they're all, they're, they're working together to see what these students are going to learn. Um, they work together in the class. We have our, our EL teacher that goes and supports, you know, the students if they're working individually in the bay um, and they need help with understanding, you know, what the process is, understanding what the vocabulary is. But they also, we use a different site, not at our main site, we use the, the high school and they have access to a classroom where if they see that, you know, the students need help, they can pull them out, take them into a classroom and provide that extra support there. Um, an advantage of our program, we're articulated with Mount SAC. So once our students finish, they can move on there. Um, and our Mount SAC is not part of our consortia. However, um, our CCD is part of our consortia. So what we do is we um, coordinate field trips. So they have a more extensive welding program there where they can get certifications. So at you know a point in the middle of the class, we set up a a field trip where they go over to RCC, they see their program, they see what they offer, they you know explain to them what all the certifications look like and how they continue on there. Um, when we started reaching out to our ESL students, we really looked at, at 
focusing on level three and up. So that's really where, you know, we, we found we've had the most success with our students. And then also for this class, it's, we charge $140 for the equipment. So they get a bag that has like $400 worth of, you know, their gloves, their mask, their, you know, jacket, everything that they need. If they can't afford that, we provide all of that for them to use while they are in the class. So that has helped to, to eliminate that barrier of, you know, the expense of starting a class like that. So again, just to kind of break it down of what it looks like. So our students enroll in the workforce training course. So that's the CTE part. They have the EL support in the class. And then these students, like I said, the, the students that are ESL students, they are also enrolled in your traditional ESL class where um, they get added support there um, in that class. Like I said, when we looked at the co-teaching model, we allowed the teachers, we allow the teachers time, you know, before the beginning of the class, during the sessions, they have um, planning time incorporated in that where they meet together to make sure that they have the single set of learning objectives. Um, like I said, the teachers are in the same class or in the shop as in the welding, welding class. Um, we have additional instructional time. So the students that are, so not only are they in, for example, they're in the welding class, they meet Tuesday, Thursday, six to 10. Then they have an additional Friday, six to eight. We were doing it online. We're gonna go back to in-person where they meet to have additional support. That is the in-person part with also supplemental asynchronous work in that. Um, we, we provide for our students when they're finished job training. So our district has a welding department. They can go out if other schools need something welded, the, our students can help with that. We've worked with um, community organizations such as the Parks and Recs Department, or they needed you know, a sign welded. So our students went out and as a community project help with, helped with that. So we see that you know, we're able to give them the real life job training. Um, we've been fortunate, both of our instructors are current welders. So they teach them about, you know, going into the union, they have access to all of the ins and outs of, of how to do that. And they, they're they very hands-on, very current with all of the different techniques in welding. I mean, I've learned so much. There's TIG welding and MIG welding and, and aluminum welding and just really understanding and teaching our students so that when they're done with us, they're actually, even after the 16 weeks are not certified, but many of them have been able to go on and get jobs. Um, the second class that we offer is our security guard class. So that's only a five week course, it's very short. Um, we have 60 hours of instruction. We have co-teaching also in that class. Um, we have, you know, the, the EL instructor is in with the, um, with the teacher, he's a retired sheriff so he's a plethora of knowledge for us and really really understands everything that we have to do um, and when the students finish they they'll they take their guard card test with us but our district allows them to be processed as a substitute campus supervisor so it's a it's a hook to get our students to come and, and do this it helps our district especially right now because there's so many vacancies and so many positions and it's a win-win for everyone so again, the, the security guard class is set up very much the same way. The student enrolls in the security guard class. They get their EL support in class. They have an additional period outside where they meet with just the EL students. And those students are also part of your traditional ESL class. Um, again, we focus on levels three and up for this. Um, for our students, uh, we are authorized by the Bureau to the Bureau of Security and Investigative Services to issue the guard card test. So we administer the test when the students are in our class and on campus. We complete the applications with them in class. Um, we have um, we have a contract with a fingerprinting service that comes on site for our students when their class is done. And we schedule that and we pay for their fingerprinting. And we also pay the fees for their guard card. So that's just one way that we can get our students, like I said, taking away all the barriers that we can in order to make sure that they're able to, to get a job. And then um, incorporated in that, since we're part of our consortia, our CCD, Moreno Valley Community College is part of that. So they have a Ben Clark Training Center which is heavy in law enforcement, um, fire services. Our students also take a field trip to that so that they're able to, you know, see what is available to them after, you know, after they're done with us. And if they have any 
any type of questions or they have anything to do in, in the future. Um, we have found, like I said, our teacher is, he's amazing. He, he has over 35 years of experience as a, a sheriff. And we've just found that, you know, he really prepares our students. He helps them understand what they need. Um, I'm currently working. What I'm really trying to do is get a collaboration um, with a local security guard company where, you know, we're out here in Riverside County. We have lots of music festivals and Coachella and all of this. So being able for us to partner with them so that we can supply, you know, a workforce for them so that they have those students ready to go. A lot of times when they're looking for people to, to support these music festivals and, you know, all the different activities that go on, they're having to train them. So if we can train them, get them ready, get the guard card, submit everything for them, then they're ready to get a job. So um, that is really all that I have. I don't know if anyone has any questions or, or, or anything. <laughs> Thank you, Anna Marie. We have some questions in okay. the chat and I'll go ahead and read them to you. I didn't want okay. to interrupt you. So the first one was, um, did you get a grant for the supplies of the welding students? Um, you talked about paying for their equipment if they couldn't afford it. So I guess they're asking, how do you, how do you, how do you pay for that? Well, for their equipment, for the welding class, um, we lend it to them so that they do not keep um, when they're here. So we, you know, we've purchased all the equipment with either CAPE funds. We have extra funds that our district has given us. We have funds from fees that are, you know, not, not as restrictive where we're able to utilize that um, to help pay for pay for that equipment for our students. And like I said, it, it was amazing. We didn't have to do the initial investment in the welding shop, which was huge for us because I know our district spent, you know, well over, you know, a couple million dollars to, to get it in place. So we were able to add. So, you know, whereas they had, you know, you know, for those of you who know, they have MIG and TIG and, you know, we've added plasma cutters and we've added just a lot of other things to help supplement. So our students are really prepared when when they leave and a lot of times they'll come in and they'll say you know I want to learn how to do this specific process and thankfully now we've been able to to provide those machines you know the equipment all the supplies are very expensive you know and, and post-COVID they've gotten ridiculous in terms of you know buying the metal and everything for them to practice on but you know we see that our, our students need it our community needs it and they're really taking advantage of it. And my question to you was uh what can can they get a job after this this intro course or can what are they what are the, what's the next step for them so you know they're they're not certified when they finish with us you know we have the the articulation with mount sac and we also have the the collaboration with rcc so if they want to go on and get certified through the um i believe it's american welding society they can uh however a lot of them learn enough to where they can work in a local shop. So we we have had, you know, individuals come by, they see the shop open at night, they'll be like, hey, I own a welding shop down the street, you know, can you supply someone to come and, you know, maybe get an employee for me? And, and like I said, our instructors, we've been very blessed that they've had lots of connections to where the instructors give them great advice on where they can, where they can get jobs. So even if they're not certified, they can start working in welding and then work their way up. That's terrific. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. So uh, Sabrina asked, was it difficult to find an ESL instructor to work from 6 to 10 p.m. for your welding program? Honestly, it really wasn't. And I was fortunate that, you know, the, the two that we've used, they both have kind of, you know, construction welding experience. So it was a nice fit. I was very concerned about that at first. You know, we have people that are, you know, highly ESL and academic who don't, you know, the CTE. So finding those personalities, that was something that I had to take into account. So, you know, in looking at my staff and just really getting a good match because I know, you know, and, and my welding teachers are, are special guys, you know, and they're, you know, working guys and, and just, finding the personality match was, wasn't that difficult. Like I said, I guess we were blessed that we were able to, to find someone who was willing. And to I, yeah, I think it's, uh, I've heard that from a lot of uh, administrators that, you know, there are certain teachers who want to learn this. It, it's a steep learning curve, but it's exciting to, mm -hmm. to learn a trade like this. In a sense, you're the, the ESL teacher is learning the trade along with the student in a sense. Exactly. And I, you know, I had never been in a welding shop before we opened the shop and I, it's so exciting for me to go in, you know, you see the sparks flying and all this kind of stuff. And it really is a, it, it's a cool thing to just even to be around. 
Sure. Okay. So uh, Sabrina also asked, how did your program decide to implement a welding program? I think you mentioned that you all were given this uh, classroom. It says, how did you get the data supporting the need for this program in your community? So we looked at the labor market and, you know, really seeing where the different you know, areas were and welding was one of them where, you know, it's a, it's a fast growing um, area. There's a lot, there are lots and lots of jobs. You know, when you look at all the construction that's going up, everything starts from the basis of, you know, the, the welding. So like I said, our instructors, one of them, you know, he'd be in LA working, he worked at SoFi and he did all this stuff. So he was able, you know, to really bring the students that perspective and that lens. So they really, you know, got a good understanding of what it takes. You know, it's not an easy job and it could be a hundred degrees and you're outside welding in the heat. And, you know, that's the reality of it. But, you know, thankfully our, our teachers are still, you know, working in that field. So they, they provide them with so much information. And Rhonda asked, does your welding instructor have a CTE credential? Yes, yeah, they both do, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's another hard sell, you know, it is, you know, especially for someone who doesn't want to do it, you know, but, you know, providing support and like, however, I can help you, you know, I'm willing to help as well, because, you know, I know it's sometimes a heavy lift, especially, you know, they have their regular job, they're teaching in the evening, and then to add this to their plate, and it's an expense, you know, that's not always the easiest thing to convince someone to do, but, you know, I, I I've been fortunate, like I said, my, both of my instructors are, you know, relatively young and they're looking at retirement they're like my body can't handle welding the rest of my life so what am I going to do later on so it's kind of like their little safety net of what they plan on doing later on in life. and just to say our teachers our training teachers must be CT have a CT credential and we talked earlier in the year about a, 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 an ESL teacher I was it was it Elisa Takeuchi? I think it was, who, who got her CTE credential uh, based a lot on her experience in the area, which I think was technology. So I think our, our welding instructor, someone who is a welder, can fairly easily get, um, get a, a CTE credential. Of course, there is an expense, et cetera. Thank you so much. And Catherine asks, which co-op do you pair with the welding program? Um, we use uh, 36, so we do the safety. So that's huge, especially in welding safety, such a huge part of, you know, they can go blind if they don't put their mask on correctly. They can burn themselves. They, you know, there's so much they can cut them, their fingers off. So that we use actually use for both. We use safety as well for the security guard because that's that's another one where they have to be safe if they're, you know, they learn how to um how to handcuff. So they learn a lot of a different, you know, physical things that they may not necessarily do. But since our instructor has so much knowledge in that, he, he adds that to the course. Thank you. So that's the perfect one for both, as you say, for both of these. And um, I love that, that you, you know, have this in your community. I think everybody probably has welding need, but I love that you connected the security guard to Coachella and other concert venues. I mean, that's just so perfect. Uh, for you to be doing security guard and, and knowing that there are jobs in your community, as I talked about earlier with the needs assessment, there's no point offering job training that there's no jobs. Exactly. For, you know, you know so and, and I'm happy too that with the security guard, you know, it's kind of like a, a precursor for our district. You know, all of us know that there are these, you know, vacancies everywhere. And, you know, I can say, if you do this class, my district will hire you as a sub. So that's kind and, of like another- And that is great too. And we've seen that in childcare, we've seen that in uh, teaching assistant training. So yes, look to your own district where there are jobs needed and train for that. Well, it sounds like Harupa is doing a great job. You're doing a great job and you've done a great presentation for us. Thank you so Thank much. 